I was on a different screen to see it. Okay, three on the free response. Let me do screen share on that then. Okay, can you see this, Marina? Yes, I can. So, um, since they kind of built one off the other, you first use Dalton's Law up here, a uh, number one, to get that pressure, the partial pressure. And then you plugged it into number two, which was the PV equals NRT. <clears throat> but yeah. this time you said it for N, and so then you had the 741 up there, you can see it um, over the 760, yeah. all that gave you that 0 0.00731 moles of oxygen. Once you have the moles of oxygen, it's just a moles to grams conversion. Okay. And from this balanced equation right here, you can see that there's, um, you, you had, uh, for every one mole of oxygen, you had two moles of, of hydrogen peroxide. So you ran it through like a bridge basically and um, took your moles of oxygen and then you did the one mole of oxygen on the bottom and the two moles of hydrogen peroxide on the bottom and then convert the moles of hydrogen peroxide to grams of hydrogen peroxide and that gave you the answer. Okay. Yeah, I did that one wrong then. Okay. I think a lot of students tried to um, use PV equals NRT again here for some reason. Uh, let's see. And Caitlin, can you can you hear okay? She might be muted. I don't know. Oh, she might. She might be. Oh. She's not, she can't see the video and she can't hear anything. Oh, uh, oh. in case she comes back. All right. Um, well, we will, uh, if she has questions, then she can, she can um, type them in. In the meantime, um, um, let me see. Can we do seven, um, seven, eight, and nine? On the free response or the multiple choice? Uh, on the multiple choice. Okay. Okay. You know, why don't I do this? Um, because I, I can't type very well on here. Um, but you can you can see the answers. They're B A D. But I will pull up my my pad and show you. I think that would be easier. Okay. Let's see. Screen share. All right. Okay, so you can see the screen or see that. All right. So for number seven, I'll pull it over just a little bit more. Okay. And look, I tried line pad, and maybe it would help me write better. All right. So number seven uh, on the multiple choice. Uh, the sample of 0 0.01 moles of oxygen gas is combined to, or combined at 37 degrees Celsius and 0.216 atmospheres. What would be the pressure of the sample at 15 degrees Celsius in the same volume? So we know that we're doing the P1 V1 over T1 equals P2 V2 over T2 because we have a change in conditions. So we know we're using the combined gas law. The same volume, 
means that the V1 and the V2 go away because it's the same on both sides. And it's looking for what would be the pressure, so we're looking for P2. So our equation is going to be P2 is equal to P1 T2 over T1. And uh, we need to change our temperature to our temperatures to Kelvin. The moles don't play a role at all. It's like a little distractor there. So we can ignore that. So P2 is equal to the P1, which was 0 0.216 atmospheres. The T2 would be 15 degrees Celsius, which is, so that's 15 plus 273. And uh, I think that's, two, is that 288? Uh, I think. Oops. Does that sound right? Uh, 15 plus 273. 288. 288, okay. And the, um, the initial temperature was 37 degrees Celsius. So 37 plus 273. So 780, is that 310, I believe? Um, 37. Yeah, 310. Okay, so what it boils down to is 0 0.216 atmospheres times 288 Kelvin over 310 Kelvin. So what I, because it's multiple choice at this point, I'm not going to do any more math. I'm going to look and see, do I have an answer? Since this number right here, let me, let me switch colors of ink. Uh, this color, or this, this answer right here is basically a number that is a little bit less than one, right? right. So we have 0.216 times a number a little bit less than one. So that means that C and D are out because they're larger than our they're larger than our initial pressure. So that leaves 0 0.201 and 0 0.175. And if this number is just a little bit less than one, it would have to be B because to get it down to 0 0.175, it would require a number uh, quite a bit less than one. Right. Does that make sense? So. That means that the answer is going to have to be B, and and so it's at you know at some point like you're looking at that going okay that's going to be a pain to try to round. Is there any way that I can do a process of elimination? Okay, that makes sense. Okay, all right. So now we're going to go on to number eight. Yeah. All right, number eight, multiple choice. Which of the following gases deviates most from ideal behavior? An ideal behavior is really, um, so the five postulates of the kinetic molecular theory, the KMT, are really gases that are small. There's no attraction or repulsion. Their volume is negligible compared to the whole volume. Um, their collisions are elastic. So, so what we're looking for to be ideal is a nonpolar molecule small, it could be um, monatomic, or it could be the small diatomic ones. And so some of this will make more sense now that we've done this unit on bonding, but um, our choices are, are A with the SO2, B with neon, C with CH4 and D, which is N2. And drawing these Lewis-Dot structures, there's um, methane, there's the N2, neon, and then SO2. Oh, shoot. SO2, you know what, in fact, I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna mess it up. So I'm gonna draw it a little bit over here.
You could do it like that, or you could do a double bond here. It, this is like the whole, it doesn't matter. But you look at it, and if you're looking for small monatomic, so the small, the monatomic, so that means neons out, the small diatomic, that means N2's out, nonpolar, that means CH4 is out, and SO2 is definitely polar, and it's got, you might say, as far as electron density, it's kind of bigger like that. So there's going to be a lot of elect, um, uh, attraction and repulsion. So that's why A is the right answer for A. Okay. Wait, I thought that you said that, like, the diatomic um, elements were most ideal. So N2 is part of the Brinkle half, so that's why I put... Okay, the thing it it the N two would be closest to behaving ideally, but the question asks which deviates, which is the furthest from ideal behavior. Okay. So that's why N two can't be the right answer. All right, I see what you're saying. Okay, I read the question wrong then. Okay, that's okay. Well, let's. I think I'm. Um, that's a, that's a question that comes up a lot. Um, we like that question. AP likes that question. Let me see if there's one like it on the on the retake. Okay. Um, mm, it's um, the question is is yes. There's a question like this on the retake. The main thing is is try to remember uh, all this information here that 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 the ideal is like this. So if it deviates, if it deviates, you're looking at, the reason that it deviates is because it's polar. Sometimes it's larger. Um, of what you're, of what you circled. Right. So, but just remember that the whole thing with polar, that's like the big reason. That's the one that is, that really, that's what causes gases to not behave ideally. All right. All right. So now let me go and address number nine. Okay. Number nine on the multiple choice. Uh, samples of, oh, this one. Samples of F2 gas and, and xenon gas are mixed in a container of fixed volume. Initial partial pressure of the F2 gas is 8.0 atmospheres and that of the xenon gas is 1.7 atmospheres. When all the xenon gas reacted forming a solid compound, the pressure of the unreacted fluorine gas was 4.6 atmospheres. Temperature remained constant. What is the formula of the compound? Okay, this one is just, this one's a pain. Every single year, this is one of the most missed questions. And I understand why. I don't, I don't really know how to address it ahead of time. But one of the things you can look at is that um, you write out the equation first. So Xe plus F2 gives us something that's Xe, and we don't know what it is. We'll say that, um, we'll call it A, and F has some letter B. So we know that it, that's basically what we're looking for. Okay. Um, and judging from the multiple choice answers, this, uh, I could probably just get rid of the A here because the, all the choices, the Xe is one. Now, the reason that that's gonna be fine is because in the question it says when all of the Xe gas has reacted. So it's all been used up. So maybe we can just assume that that's what's gonna happen. Um, it talks about atmospheres. And so you've got partial pressures. And if you remember that like mole fraction is, uh, or I should probably make this like this, Mole fraction is equal to. Say again. Uh, okay, now I see your screen. Oh, okay. So n of whatever the gas is over n total. That's the mole fraction, but that's also the same as the partial pressure of the gas over the total pressure. So there's a lot of similarity between moles and partial pressure. They behave quite similarly as far as their, their numbers. So when you're doing this and you're looking at the, the pressures that are consumed, it is absolutely fine. So if we treat it like that, we'd say, well, we start with 1.7 atmospheres. So what I'm saying is they're interchangeable and it would be easy for us to, to use them interchangeably with this problem. 
So 1.7 atmospheres um, plus the 3.4 atmospheres, which came from the F2, gives us that Xe and F, and then whatever we're trying to find is that subscript, however much is used. What, what that tells me is that for every one mole of xenon, that's two moles of F2. Primarily because 3.4 divided by 1.7 is equal to 2. So that's like 2 over 1. So if this were a mole fraction, it would be, remember this is the, the we could also reverse it the other way. Why don't I do that? That would probably make a lot more sense. Um, you know, we said we have this right here. So, uh, the, the mole fractions like that, the 1.7 atmospheres. Okay. And the 3.4 atmospheres. Um, you can see that those partial pressures right there are going to be very similar to mole fraction, which is why we can treat this and, and make this, oh, that's like one mole of, of Xe and two moles of F2. Is that making some sense? Yeah. And, and if that's the case, then that means that's four Fs. So then it's Xe F4. And, and to be totally honest with you, I mean, I think this is a useful information to have but I don't believe there's a question like that on the retake. Like that's one of the only questions I saw like that on the, t on the different uh, possible AP questions. Okay, I'll just make sure I write that down there. Okay. Um, be sure, you know, that those density questions, there's another with, with the density of the gas and you, you, you use it in the, um, where molar mass equals, actually, let me differentiate so that we can see we're on a different problem. Yes. I got that right. So, oh, okay. The GRT over PV. So it's really molar mass is equal to G over V, which is density. Um, yeah. Oops, times RT over P. So um, there's a question like that on the test too. Can we go over number 14 because I didn't get that right? Oh, you did? Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't hear that part. Sure. Uh, okay, so 14. Okay, I'm going to... Uh, I guess I'll just continue with this. Let me change font so we know what we're dealing with here. Number 14, multiple choice. Okay. Um, so in this problem, it gave you some... Uh, some values for temperature and pressure, and then it gave you the um, and it gave you the density. So, and it also gave you the empirical formula, asking you to find the molecular formula. So, the molar mass was equal to five point three six grams. And it was grams per liter, which means it was one liter on the bottom, times R, which was zero point zero eight two one. And that was liters. I don't do well writing very small with this, but I'm gonna try liters atmosphere over mole Kelvin. And um, the temperature was 17 degrees Celsius, which is, let's see, 17 plus 273, 80, 290, 290 Kelvin. And this was over the pressure, which was 0.8 five atmospheres, which was fine because that was the units we need. Okay. Now, um, this had some, some good things and some bad things, but this is what I did. Um, 
the 0 0.0821 is is the 821 is kind of close to the 85. So, and it was 0 0.08 versus 0 0.8. So I just said, well, this is pretty close to saying, and I'm gonna change font so it's a little bit it's a little bit easier to see what I'm doing. I said this right here became one and this number became 10. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. And then I'm gonna keep changing colors so we can see every time I do this. Then the 10 went away and became one and this 290 became 29. Because um, oh. 0 0.08 versus 0 0.8 okay. is like one tenth of that. So now this and 10 goes into 290, 29 times. So we've got 29 here. So now we've got 29 times 5.36. So what I said then was <clears throat> that is pretty close to 30. So, or I said that was about 30. So 30 times 5 equals 150 and um, 30 times this right here this 0.36 is like one third 30 times one third is equal to about 10 and add those two together and I get about 160 so does that make sense with me so far? Yeah. Okay, last thing I did was to say, okay, each one of the possible, um, all these different uh, formulas have a carbon, H2, and an O. There was some variation on that, which means that I have 12, 12 plus 16 plus, let's say, 2. So 14 and 16 is, is that 30? What'd you say, 16 and what? 12 and 16 and two, I think that's 30. Yeah, that's 30. So okay. it's 30, okay. So 30 then, so then what I wanna know is, how many, oops. Um, we'll just leave it orange. So how many times does 30 go into 160? And I said, definitely five times, you know, with 10 left over. I'm like, okay, whatever. But what that tells me is that I must have a C5, uh, oops, H10, O5, or something like that. And, and the closest one to that is D. So I will go back and, so, the, so since that was the closest one, that's our answer, D. Okay. So, so on the so on this next test, you know, I could ask you to go the other direction and just get the empirical formula. And in in that case, you would need to look and see, you know, how many carbons, how many oxygens are are you are possible with the mass that you end up finding. But all your choices are going to be far enough apart that, you know, they're going to be, um, most of them are going to be anywhere from 16 to, to 20 apart. So hopefully the rounding won't, the, the, or the rounding should not be an issue. It should, it, you know, if you round a little bit here or there, it shouldn't give you a totally wrong answer. See, what I did was I marked it right on my paper but on a scantron and mark it on a different answer. Oh shoot. I'm sorry. So you know how to do it, it sounds like. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Is there another question? Um, I think I, I'm seeing, I just happened to see some of the Schoology stuff and I'm not sure Priscilla McElhaney said she's trying to get on. Is she? Let me see if, um, I thought I invited her. I'll try again. I think I responded 
more to that. Okay. I sent, I just sent her another one in case my first one didn't go through. Yes, on the practice exam. Um, it is. Uh, oh, you want to you want to talk about a question like that, like number eleven, or in the free response. Okay. Well, let's see if we can, um, let's see, well, let's do number 11 and then I'll take a look and see if there's anything like it or, or what we have on the test that's like it. Oh yeah, we have one very similar to it on the, on tomorrow's test. Okay. So this is, uh, Yes, I'm sorry, you're right. It's not tomorrow, it's Wednesday. I'm so used to doing these the day before. Okay. Number 11 on the practice test. Huh. Okay. Um, and on that one, which one, which of the falling gases effuses at twice the rate of xenon? Two times xenon. So, um, whenever you see E fuse or D fuse, you know that you're dealing with Graham's law. So rate of A over rate of B is equal to the square root of the molar mass of B divided by the square root of the molar mass of A. So when it gives you something like that, when it starts talking about the rate, it makes it pretty easy in some regards because it's telling you what the numbers are for rate. So if it's two times, we're looking for a gas that fuses at two times the rate of xenon. So that means xenon is the larger and the slower. So that means that this is going to be xenon and this is going to be xenon. So I'm going to rewrite it with that, and it's two times, which means that it's going to be 2 over 1 is equal to the square root of, I should have pulled out my periodic table, obviously, xenon Okay. So we have, so basically this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to find the more mass of A. So I would square both sides. So I end up with a four over one is equal to 131 over the molar mass of A. So I do a cross multiplication and I get molar mass of A is equal to 131 divided by four. So four goes into that at least 30 times, right? Something like 32 times or 33 times. So, so I'm looking for a gas that has a mass of 32. And I look at my choices, and it just so happens that I already know that oxygen, O2, just because I remember it, is 32. But all the other choices are off. I think, uh, right. not that you have to do this. This would be a big waste of time on the test, actually, if you did all this. But A, the choice, what is that, 48? Oops. Mm -hmm. B is um, 19 times 3 is 54. 54 plus 14 is 
68. C is 32, and D is 12 plus 16 is 28. So D could be a detractor. you got to be careful about that, but clearly the answer is C for that one. So really, and this is the whole thing, like, um, you know, the rate that when they tell you it's two times or three times or one half or whatever it is, you can, you can substitute those numbers in for A or B and then just make the other number one. So if it's two times xenon, that means that it's going to be two over one. If it's one third xenon, then xenon would be the fast one and have to be on top and you would have one third on bottom, which would basically make it three over one again. But now your molar mass is that you're trying to find is on top. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. If it's one where it's like twenty percent, like faster, slower, faster, something like that. Yeah. You, well, I think that um, one way you could do that is if if it was twenty percent of gas, whatever the gas was, that means that the faster gas is one. And then whatever it is on bottom. So now, now you have no calculator. And if this is a multiple choice question, this goes back to trying to remember what the fractions are. So if 20% is a fraction, what is that? One fifth. One fifth. And one over one fifth is equal to five. So then, so then five over one is equal to, and because we because it's a lighter gas, square root of the molar mass of whatever it is the gas we're trying to find that's unknown over the square root of the molar mass of the known gas. Because usually you're comparing it. So whatever is known is on bottom there. And then of course you would square both sides and and then solve for molar mass of the gas. Okay. Okay. Good questions. Any other questions? Can you explain number two? Uh, on the practice test? Yeah. Or no, on the, for the retake. It's number two on the multiple choice. On the, on the practice test or the actual test? On the actual test. Actual test, okay. And this is the this is the multiple choice. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so the question is: A compound is heated to produce a gas whose molecular weight is to be determined. The gas is collected by displacing water in a water-filled flask inverted in a trough of water. Which of the following is necessary to calculate the molecular weight of the gas, but does not need to be measured during the experiment? So this is what we did. We, we collected a gas through water displacement and um, the flask, well, we didn't use a flask, we used a udiometer. But when you are calculating molecular weight, um, you, you don't measure it. And so the choices, let me just write this down. Oh, I should probably say which one we're doing again. So this is number two, uh, Unit test, multiple choice. Okay, so water displacement. So before I, I just come right out and answer this, this, I can't even spell. <laughs> displacement. It's Monday, it's allowed. It's still, yes, thank you. It's, it's Monday night, it's, it's still Monday. All right, so the things that we measure we measure, um, when we did this, we measured uh, volume of the gas collected. We measured the temperature of the water. We measured the temperature of the air. We measured the pressure of the air. And this is like the... This right here was like the P total, which is the barometric pressure. Um, I think we measured the mass. 
we'll just use ours, the mass of, let's say, the magnesium. Um, I think those were the main things that we measured. What we did not measure, what we actually had to look up in a table was the pressure of the H2O, the vapor pressure, at a given, at a given temperature. And so in, in this choice, this right here, this was choice B. The vapor pressure of the water, we did not measure that vapor pressure. We had to use Dalton's law, P total, minus uh, the pressure of the, uh, what we got from the table to get the pressure of our gas. And so this one, we looked up, it could be in a book. And it's based, because it was based upon the temperature of the water. So that's one of the tricky questions that pops up a lot. The water displacement lab is very popular in AP chemistry. And so um, if it's not in the multiple choice, it's in the free response or both. In this case, it's gonna be primarily in the free response. Can you go over number 10 uh, on the actual test? Uh, yes, I can. Okay. Number 10, multiple choice. Unit test. Okay. Let's see. Oh, okay. So they used a manometer, which is a type of pressure. Like they use it for... Um, they could use it for blood pressure or, and I guess, but, or they could use it for just the, the barometric pressure. Um, so they gave a temperature and the temperature does not matter at all. It's a distractor. It's the same thing anytime they do a, a displacement type of problem. Um, what they're trying to find is the partial pressure of oxygen. So we've got, it's all about Dalton's law again. P total is equal to P of the, in this case, it's mercury. plus the P of the gas we're trying to find, which is O2. So the partial pressure of the O2 is equal to the total pressure minus the pressure in the millimeters of Hg. And so the total pressure is what you would get from that graph, or that, not the graph, I'm sorry, the picture. Um, they had this picture on there. Man, I am a horrible artist. Uh, yeah, this is true. So from here down to here, so that like this was all the um the mercury oh i guess it was the water too huh mm -hmm. uh the pressure pressure it's water at this temperature the very pressure of water is oh because they oh i'm sorry they gave it the the millimeters of mercury were the units mm -hmm. my apologies Okay, so this right here, this was the P total. Okay, because what this is in here, what's in there is the pressure of the H2O. Wow, my thing's getting stickier. H2O plus the pressure of the O2. That's what's in this region in the, um, in this part right here. Okay. Okay. So once we do that, then it's just the 161 minus the 28 millimeters of mercury. 
They're both they're both millimeters of mercury as the units. So then the answer comes out to one thirty three millimeters of mercury, which is B. Yeah, and you know, it's one of those problems that it's almost too easy. Like, how could they possibly want me to just subtract 161 and 28? Like, how silly is that? But it is. It's the same thing we do in general chemistry. It's that one essential skill that we do over and over again because people don't realize it's so easy. All they have to do is subtract the two numbers. But, but I would have to say it's... Miss frequently, so don't forget that that's what you need to do. That's usually the first step. Like in the free response question, it's the first step to find out whatever the partial pressure is of the gas that you're trying to find, like the molar mass or the moles for, or whatever you're trying to find. You've got to find, you've got to subtract the total pressure minus the vapor pressure of water to get that pressure. Oh, the the height, the H, the, the way that the barometers used to work is that, um, here, I'm going to turn the page for just a second. So, so old barometers was like, there's like a pool here. So there was a pool of mercury, and just because I can, I'm going to make this blue. We're going to pretend like this is gray. I probably have gray and don't even realize it. Okay, and then coming up out of the pool was a, a tall tube. And I don't know exactly how tall it is. I want to say it was a meter. But what, because what happened was that on a regular day at sea level, they would say that the mercury, uh, oh, I should use a different color for that. Uh, on a regular day at sea level, this height was 760 millimeters. So this is an old barometer, the tube that comes way up out of the top on a regular day at sea level, the height that the mercury went up the tube was 760 millimeters. And so that was the one atmosphere, 760 millimeters mercury. So in that picture on the test, they were saying the height of the mercury, the total pressure of the mercury or of that, of the pressure inside the bulb was 161 millimeters. So but it, was, it was 161 millimeters of mercury. So that corresponded with, with the units of the, the vapor pressure inside the, inside the bulb, which were 28 millimeters of mercury. But that's why they gave it as H, because it's the height that, that mercury travels up a tube. Hopefully you, won't see, hopefully you won't see that very much on the AP exams, because that's not something that we use anymore. Other questions? While you guys are thinking and looking, um, I want to just remind you that the root mean square speed, square root of 3RT over big capital M, where M is equal to kilograms per mole. So if, as an example, if it was oxygen, 
that's equal to 0 0.016 kilograms per mole. And that the R is equal to 8.31 um, joules. Uh, is it joules per Kelvin mole? I'm suddenly forgetting. Okay. Oh, and I still have your chem notebook. How very clever of me. Um, well, the main thing is that, is that you remember that it's 8.31. Right, and that's on the reference sheet, right? It's Absolutely. Which one to use. Right. You, the number is given to you. You just have to remember that that's the one you use on the root mean square speed. Uh, yes, the one that says that starts with a rigid metal tank contains oxygen gas. Yeah. Okay. All right. So this is number 11, multiple choice, unit test. Um, which of the following applies to the gas in the tank when additional oxygen is added at comp constant temperature. Okay, so the things that you need to recognize are that you have a rigid tank. So what rigid means is that no volume change. And then they said that it's um, constant temperature in this example. which is interesting. And they're adding more oxygen gas. Um, so A asks you, which of the following is true? The average speed of the gas molecules remains the same. So speed same, and, and would that be true? And what is speed directly, in this particular case, what is speed directly related to? The temperature. If the temperature is the same, then the then the speed would be the same. So this one is true. But let's say we can't believe that the, it's just going to be A. We could say B is the, the volume increase. And we just said that there is no volume change, therefore this one can't be true. It's a rigid container. There's no there's gonna be no volume change. C says the pressure of the gas decreases. Well, if we just added more oxygen, that is going to increase the pressure. More, remember more moles, uh, more moles would be more pressure. We said that um, the mole fraction is very similar, if not the exact same thing, as the as the partial pressure. So if moles of gas go up, so does the partial pressure of the gas. So obviously it can't be C, and that leaves us with D. Uh, the total number of gas molecules remains the same. And we just got finished saying that that's not true because we added more oxygen gas. So that's not true either. So the answer has to be A. I think the tricky part though is that, you know, really reading the question and understanding what it means by the rigid container, the fact that its volume is not going to change. All right. Other questions? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. Can you number nine on the multiple choice? Sure. Trying to get it. Oh, we did, we did this one. Here, let me go back. Oh, okay. I had to switch computers and now I can actually see. 
Okay. Um, oh, okay, here we go. Um, so this was number nine in multiple choice. This was the unit test. Excuse me. Um, so we had xenon plus fluorine gas gives us some compound of xenon plus fluorine. And the options in the multiple choice, there is no uh, subscript for xenon. So we know that whatever xenon is, it's a one. And then we've got some subscript for, for, for fluorine as far as it's in the compound. Mole fraction is equal to the moles of the gas over the total moles which is the same thing as the partial pressure of the gas over the total pressure. So, so the moles of the gas and the pressure of the gas are directly related. They're almost the same thing. And for our purposes, they're going to be. We said there was 1.7 atmospheres of the xenon. And we said there were 3.4 atmospheres of the fluorine because the problem said 1.7 atmospheres is what we began with, but all of it reacted. Um, and only 3.4 atmospheres of the fluorine gas was used up because we were left with 4.6 atmospheres. So eight minus 4.6 was 3.4. So um, the 3.4, I must have erased it, over 1.7 is equal to the two over one. So because we already said that the moles and partial pressure are so close, that's two moles of F2 over one mole of xenon. Two moles of F2 and one mole of xenon. Which means that two times two gives us the four. That's where we get the, the F4 from. So it's Xe F4. And that was choice D. Okay. It just be a number? Um, usually they're looking for, and I, what I should say is for me too, usually I'm looking for an actual um, number um, rather than just the fraction. But if you left it in the fraction form, I am pretty sure you would not get marked down for that. Um, I would have to say that. Oh, I I was just gonna hear. Let me. I was just um. Sorry. That I don't remember what the exact, but it was like a two point one three times ten to the negative fourth divided by uh, whatever that number is. I can't remember. Whatever it was, was equal to 0 0.0283. And the thing was is that this, this number right here is what is in the key given to us by AP, by College Board. So when they say that, that's what makes me think they're looking for that. But after having spoken with graders, uh, whatever this number is, they are, I don't think that they grade so hard. If you've gotten to this point, they probably would allow it because you must have, you figured out that far. It's just a matter of plugging the calculator and I don't think they would mark you down for that. Does that make sense? Hello? Oh, it got really quiet there. <laughs> so I'm so sorry about that. Oh, okay. So did you guys, did I totally lose all of you? Hello? Oh, okay. And I was muted. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. So I, I don't know what, what I, was, I think I was talking for a while and, and I was gone or something. Um, what I was going to say is that, um, that after talking with graders, I don't think they would mark you down for doing that, but the AP, the college board key gives us a, a number, which means that I think they're looking for the actual 
when they say mole fraction, they're looking for the actual number that's calculated. Right. Yes. Okay. And are there any units on that? Or no. No, no, there's no units on that. Not on the mole fraction. Because it would be just moles over moles. Okay. And they would cancel out. All right, other questions? I think I'm good. Okay. Well, you know, you can always come back. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I should have the video posted up by tomorrow if you need to come back to anything. Okay. So Marina's good, Caitlin, are you good? How about you, Shannon? Do you have any questions? No, I'm good. <laughs> okay. Well, you know where to find me tomorrow if you guys have any questions, and you can always... Oh, say again? <laughs> what did you say, Caitlin? Oh, thank you. Happy almost Tuesday to you too. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. Uh...